Dim Eternal is eternally brutal. Just a small disclaimer before we start here. Before I had written this review, and when the review was written, I hadn't completed the game due to some issues I was having, but that has now been fixed. But we've all been over the response I got from Bethesda because they are laughable, and honestly, they did not help in any way, shape, or form. Once again, a big thank you to sitemissionblog.co.uk for hosting this review and also giving me a more permanent spot in order to do my reviews. Link in the description. As per every review done here, this was all run on the i7-7700K with an NVIDIA GTX 1080 and 16GB of RAM. Backstory. So if you never played Doom 2016, then first of all, you're doing yourself a massive disservice here. But all you really need to know is not too much. You're Doom Guy, or the Doom Slayer, or the Doom Marine, take your pick, really. And the name, not as important. What is important is some big old robot dude saw that there's a little energy crisis down there on Earth. Thought to himself, you know what? Bet Hell's got a ton of spare energy. And so, they developed the means to siphon said energy from Hell. It's also known as Argent Energy. Now, it turns out this idea was about as bright as lighting a cigar in a room filled with propane. Who knew? Whilst doing their best Indiana Jones impression in Hell, the UAC, meaning Aerospace Corporation, came across this sarcophagus, and in their myriad of bright ideas gone horribly wrong, taking this particular souvenir straight out of Hell was their smartest move, or the dumbest move if you were the lead researcher. Yeah, Mars is literally infested with demons from Hell, but look at all the energy we've got, lads. 10 out of 10. And in a turn of events that maybe some people saw coming, one researcher, Olivia, goes a wee bit and starts hearing voices. Being the most negligent company in the world, the UAC do literally fuck all about this. And the UAC care so little that this woman starts a cult and practices human sacrifice while she's doing it. 10 out of 10 company really is. And whilst all this is happening, she's also overseeing said sarcophagus and its contents. This is where she realises that for her plans, maybe what's in that sarcophagus should just maybe stay dormant in there. Well. Uh, it takes no time for the string of company negligence, dumb ideas and lack of overall respect for the human race to come back and haunt them in the form of government inquiry. I'm just joking of course, it's a demonic invasion. Who knew? Regardless of any of that, through the power of Deus Ex Machina, that's a god from the machine, from you and me, you awake from the sarcophagus, break free of your restraints and make your way through the complex guided by Dr. Samuel Hayden and the AI known as Vega. I mean all the best comedy acts do come in threes, am I right? Hayden would really appreciate it if you didn't destroy all of his cool equipment whilst destroying the demonic invasion. Yeah, that's kind of the only way to chase down Olivia. So after a little chase you meet Olivia by the siphon of the energy and she adheres to the absolute company policy and just fucking throws herself into this torrent of hell energy whilst taking, you know, taking herself straight to hell in the process. Now you being the bright, level headed, smart human being you are think, oh boy looks fun I'm gonna follow. So in hell you do some learning and some killing before coming back to Mars to meet your new boss Dr. Samuel Hayden. Now here's the big issue with crazy. They don't believe they're crazy, and they're going to try and justify everything. Aiden does this a little bit, but he also helps you, but in his true manipulative moves, anything he does to help you also furthers himself. So, you know, you go through Mars, killing the Martian demons, and go straight back to hell again to once again find Olivia. Uh, the fairly smooth sailing, to be honest, you meet some old friends who you don't quite know about until this game, so you know. Backstory, and you also kill a few higher demons as well, including the cyber demon, twice. And you get some super cool crucible sword that you will never use before finding your good old pal Olivia. Now she proclaims that she was promised so much and that what's happening wasn't promised. Who would have thought that hell was filled with liars? Like honestly, who would have thought? So she opens up her little canister of argent energy and in a very ironic twist, she becomes the spider mastermind who did not see any of this coming. Who knew? One more boss fight later, and that's it. She's dead. Gone. She's laying there, dead, mangled, and you get teleported straight back to Mars by Dr. Hayden, who then tells you that he can still fix all this. He takes a crucible from you, and you either get teleported somewhere or frozen. It's, it's not exactly said. Credits just roll. And regardless, you're not exactly going to be able to chase him in a cutscene now, are you? So with no Crucible and no way to get to Hayden, the credits are going to roll and that's going to leave you ready for Doom Eternal. 
which we're now about to talk about. Story. You know what made Doom 2016 so good? It was the gameplay. The initial trilogy of games went as follows. Good, better, and what the fuck is this? Now with the huge tonal shift that Doom 3 took, it still sold well and on average holds a 9 out of 10 on publication reviews, and that's averaging them all up. This shift, however, <coughs> went from the fast-paced action to more slow, methodical horror. And it worked well as a sort of reboot, but what followed was Doom 2016, which was an actual full reboot, and even though it only holds like an 8.6 out of 10 with the publication reviews, it's a solid 10 out of 10 with fans, let's be honest. So Doom Eternal decided to take the amazing gameplay that Doom 2016 gave us and bring it forward to some semblance of a story as well. After the events of the previous game, you are somehow in a spaceship shaped like a castle hovering over Earth, and you've also got your best bud Vega, who was the AI from the previous instalment if you don't recall, and you start this game off mid-mission in Earth looking for some hell priests. This is never explained. Now by that I do mean that the gap between Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal is not bridged as of yet. So Vegas managed to track down these priests and you are absolutely hell bent on killing them. Before long you are introduced to the new cannon fodder in this instalment which is things like the Arachnotron. Now these guys have to be the fastest and most annoying enemies next to the Archwell and they show up in almost every mob. Atop this you're going to actually learn a little bit about what's happening and the story. So the Hell Priests are carrying out the will of the Con Maker, and she is the big bad of this game. Now apparently all the work done by the UAC previously was preordained by them, and you're just an inconvenience that has to be taken out of the loop, which temporarily you were. But now that you're back in the loop, shit's gonna change, and their plan is to destroy all of humanity, and you're just gonna have to deal with that. Now whilst all this is happening, you're gonna seek some help from some old friends. They're new to the player, but to the Slayer, they are in fact old as they come from before the Doom 2016 time. One of these guys, known as the Betrayer, tells you that you should just give up. It's happened to him, happened to his people, who are the Sentinels, and now it's gotta to happen to humanity. Slayer, however, hmm, he's not having it. He's out to save humanity, and throughout all of this, the Slayer's exact reasons aren't known, but certain things are hinted at as some dialogue, and as well as that, we all know the Slayer only speaks one language, double barreled shotgun to the face. Now I need you to understand that I've just given you the first half hour to hour of the game, and it's not that I don't want to tell you the story, but after such a minimalist story in Doom 2016, this game leans quite heavily on the story, and as such, I don't want to go into too much detail about it. The overall point is, you want to save humanity, and most of them are on what's known as the Ark. Overall, this game is really about redemption, it's about Doomguy trying to redeem humanity whilst also trying to redeem himself, and that's not to say that the story is really basic, but it is kinda basic. It's a purpose built story and it works really well. Throughout all we're going to learn about Doomguy's past and everything he's kinda went through. The popular fan theory is that the Doom Slayer from Doom 2016 is the same Doom Marine from Doom 64. And it does kind of seem to be all but confirmed that that is the case with some of the things such as the Unmaker weapon as well as the outfit that he's seen wearing in one cutscene. Now just to put a little cap on this one, I want to talk about some of the finer points, those being one of the missions where you go back to Mars to punch a hole in the centre of the fucking planet. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. <laughs> Can and won't are two totally different things, by the way. Uh, that in turn is going to lead you to a little mission called Taras and the Bad. Um, that is actually quite a fun mission where we're going to learn a little bit more about the Slayer and some of the foes that he put to rest. Even the section where you go back to Hell, you ascend a spire in order to stop the flow of energy throughout Hell, and this game manages to take some of the flow that it has in gameplay and its story and interweave them seamlessly. And speaking of the gameplay. gameplay. So Doom 2016 is going to start you off faster than a Bugatti Veyron and finishes you off with all that speed plus the ferocity of a starved hyena in an abattoir. Contrast that to Doom Eternal where you start off with all of said ferocity of the hyena but the speed of grass growing and it won't take too long for the pace to pick up and before you know it you will be tearing through mobs of demons like a plague but that's about an hour into the story before you're actually doing all that. So I've split gameplay up into sort of three distinct segments here, there's combat, there's traversal and there's puzzle and each of these segments do run in sequence with each other so every time you finish one part you're moving on to another. The only downtime in this game is when you sit through one of the brief story cutscenes and those are kind of good. So let's just start off by talking about combat because this is Doom. So the combat of Doom Eternal can be broken into three encounters which I'm calling mobs. I'm calling the mobs just for the simplicity of it. So the first mob you'll get is just a standard mob that you may find on your path. You'll be walking down a corridor and there's a pinky and a couple of possessed. And I'm classing that as a sort of standard mob. Just a way to give yourself a little bit of power up 
whilst you're going through the level. The second one's a key mob, so if there's a hub area, maybe there's three keys needed, you're always going to be coming back and forth through there. You've got a key mob there, they're going to hinder your progression, try and burn through all your lives and such. Third one is a trash mob, and you get them only during boss fights really. Their sole existence is just to give you armour, health and ammo midway through a boss fight. The combat is usually a flurry of glory kills, explosions and just absolute sheer carnage. However, this can go on indefinitely when either an archwell or a buff totem is active in the area. Enemies become much more ferocious, faster and more powerful. At that point, a lowly zombie can just rock your fucking shit. To make this worse, enemies are just spawned in until either the totem or the archwell are taken out of play. This in turn makes combat less like a flash mob and more like a game of chess this time around. Now as well as this, there's some new slayer gates that do require a little bit of exploration to find the key for. This in turn gives you a self-contained arena with extremely powerful enemies that comes in waves. The only way to beat these particular encounters requires some patience and some quick reflexes because the sheer amount of enemies on the screen coming at you as well as the enemies you need to focus on just makes this a lot harder and it's an overall testing experience. In the end you will receive a key that does unlock the secret weapon on the ship which is the Unmaker. There's about 6 keys in total I believe and I've not been able to find all 6 keys throughout all 3 playthroughs so that's the exploration for another day. Now the combat is still quite similar to the previous game but with some new additions and some quick combos that you'd be as well learning in order to maximise your survivability. Fire for example will give you armour courtesy of the flame belch, glory kills will get you some health pickups and the chainsaw is going to get you some ammo. So if you combine two of these you're getting two pickups for one kill which is just an absolute time saver when you need a little bit of both. Traversal. Doom Eternal brings two new mechanics to the table, climbing and dashing. Now, even though previously you could just climb up on ledges, this time around you can actually climb in specific surfaces, and this also comes with the addition of swinging from specific bars and pipes. This allows you to reach new areas, and even though the climbing surfaces are used specifically to move through into new areas, it can also be used to hide things like suit upgrades and weapon upgrades. As well as that, it's just an easier way to spice up some of the downtime between combat. Now most of these climbable surfaces are specific walls or floating items that are essentially timed. Spending too much time in the timed ones just causes you to fall to your death and do a little quick respawn. However the dash is also used in conjunction with climbing and swinging and it used to go that little bit further distances for longer jumps. As well as that it can be used in combat in order to stagger weaker enemies for a quick interrupt or even knock them into a staggered state in order to get a quick glory kill. Now whilst doing some of the puzzles, dashing and climbing is used to reach the new area. This combined with one of the new little mini power ups which is an extra dash can give you that help getting there. Alternatively, after three playthroughs you can find better lines to do so which make it a little easier and you can save some time in that particular run. And after three attempts in less than 30 hours I'm beginning to feel like a bit of a speedrunner with all the fucking shortcuts I've taken. Puzzles. So let's talk about the weakest part of Doom Eternal now, and that would be the puzzles. These are split into three categories. Punch this, shoot this, grab this. Now the puzzles can be quite challenging, but ultimately it boils down to either punching a big box or cracking the wall or a switch with a green mark on it just to let you know that you got to punch it. Shooting a thing like a switch that once again has a green mark on it or swinging from the bars. I don't think I should have to spell it out to you, but the only thing you're really grabbing in Doom is a key. So the puzzles are mainly part of the traversal, however they do also hide things like the secret encounters or toys or weapons mods or even the suit upgrades and extra lives. Most of the puzzles are straightforward, although sometimes you can be sitting there scratching your head as you have no idea what's going on in this very simple logic puzzle, but the answer is always right in the room with you, and if you just scour around you'll eventually find the answer when you know what you're looking for. Gameplay. Again? A few gameplay changes I feel that I should touch on right now are the life system first of all because you take so much damage that you're guaranteed to die. As such there are many 1-up helmets just dotted around the game world which are going to help you. Essentially when you die you're going to respawn instantly in the spot where you died with about a second of invulnerability. At that point it's just you to get out of there and try reassess the situation and take control of it to stop yourself from dying again. You burn through an awful lot of lives in the final level I ain't gonna lie. The meat hook's also a new one, it's an attachment for the super shotgun and it can be used kind of for traversal or for close range in order to close the distance between you and a demon. When you upgrade it fully it does actually do fire damage as well so when you hook it into a demon you're going to get some armour shards as well as a quick kill. And crystals, now these are going to replace the sort of argent energy balls you got in Doom 2016 but now every two upgrades are linked to like a permanent upgrade so you've got a permanent health upgrade and armour upgrade in the same slot and then in turn you'll also get increased pick up range so it's just a kind of way of giving you like a permanent buff whilst you're also playing. So runes make a return as well but this time round you don't have to do a trial you just go up to the little thing and you pick one of the nine buffs and you get to keep 
keep three in total. Unlike the weapons, however, you don't actually have to upgrade the runes, they're just the way they are permanently. Now if you're doing things right, by the end of the game you'll have a fully upgraded suit, and that'll be before the final fight. I uh, can't say the same about the guns though, you definitely have to find your favourite mod and just play with it. There are some mods that are arguably stronger than others, for example I would rather have the sticky bomb than the fully automatic shotgun. Performance. Remember how I said I've played this game three times? We're going to touch upon that just after this section, but first we've got to praise the game before we shit on the developers. So to start off with, the default API for Doom Eternal is actually Vulcan. The previous game also had support for this API, but you could switch between Vulcan and DirectX. At this time, I'm currently unable to find a way to do this on Eternal, but that's not going to hinder it, because Vulcan, I've always felt, is actually better than DirectX. Anytime I've played on Vulcan, I've managed to get more frames, to actually be able to crank up the graphics a little more. Couldn't really do that this time, just because if I cranked it in and above medium, streaming Doom Eternal became really hard in my system, as I'm actually just under the specs that it wants for this game. Now the game did look stunning regardless of the fact that it was on medium. If I hadn't been streaming I could have maybe done a medium high mix but because I was it was almost impossible to crank it above medium. That being said though I believe this may be to do with the new id Tech 7 engine that's been used as the specifications are a lot higher than the Doom 2016 game which were actually fairly low for the time. So if we just kind of take the issue I had and keep it in the side right now but also exclude it, the game did run really smooth. You know, it was perfect, apart from that, I didn't experience any stutters, or any hangs, or any freezes, and I was able to keep the frame rate above 100 most times. The only time I kinda had issues was when I also tried recording while streaming, because apparently I was asking just a little too much of my CPU, which is understandable there. Now, despite all the updates, this game still runs smoothly, and it is still really good. When I'm not streaming it, I get more frames, I just don't want to pump it up above medium, because that requires actually playing around with more of the settings to see if I get a better mix. The game looks good, and it runs good on medium and that was good enough for me but now we're going to get into what my specific issue was and the article which is linked in the description it's actually outdated on that part because a few days later i received a response so we're going to go through that right so my story kind of begins on the day the game launched i was just absolutely powering through the game as you do um came to a level taras nabad i'm sure you will hear that a bit in regards to this level i got so far and the game just crashed so done a little tweet hi it's a bad ticket and we'll investigate this i did you know two of the business days what's going on here later on I was like, alright, so, I paid 80 quid for this game, and here's essentially what happens, okay? So, just playing, minimum business, get to the black screen, where it's loading, and loading, and desk desktop crash, and I'm like, alright, guys, what the fuck? So they say, oh, submit a ticket. So, you know, once more the next day, I'm like, alright, what's going on, the support ticket, it's an absolute joke. I'm like, oh, here, just go here and do this, right, so, like, oh, just do all of this guy. Now this is where it gets a little fun. So having kind of loaded back, tell them, you know, here's what's going on, I've done this, okay? Everything else works fine, Bartaris the bad, I've updated the drivers. Their response is this. Which is just this. So, hit them back, you know, done everything you already said, to quote myself, I've updated the drivers, da 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 da. Copied and pasted from here. But, you know, I had to restart the whole game, destroyed my save in the end, what do? Thank you for contacting Bethesda's support team. We apologise for the delay in the response and given current circumstances. I am... Um, I'm happy to say yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll accept your apology on that one. We're all kind of fucked right now. Um, we're experiencing high ticket volumes. Don't doubt that for a second. Uh, we're processing them in the order they're received. An issue where some players were crashing on the mission Final Sin was resolved. If you were experiencing this issue, please try again. If you're encountering any further mission crashes, let us know in a bug report. In order to ensure feedback is correct team, convenient bug support collection, do internal feedback form, review all this, please note the bug reports and da 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 da, thank you for your support. So, what's going on? Status is read answer provided. Essentially this is, um, this has been closed and at no point does it actually turn around and fix my issue. I still have my issue. Now granted, I've been able to finish the game, so my issue is finished. But the point is, Bethesda support did not fix my issue. And, well, you gotta love a company that tries, really. Bethesda didn't fucking try. Overall. So in conclusion, I feel like it's time to wrap this up. I'm pushing nearly 20 minutes here in Audacity. So, really quickly, 
I gave the story a 6 out of 10 because it is really basic but it is also part built. The game leans into the story a lot more than it did previously, however not enough is fleshed out in terms of cutscenes and such and it requires an awful lot of external reading on the codex pages and that's just added time into the game. You really want to play this game for that 9 out of 10 gameplay that we give it there because the gameplay is what this game's all about in the end. Performance also gave a 9 out of 10. That would have been a 10 out of 10 had it not been for my issues. So overall this game I'm going to say is 8 out of 10 and if you just add up 9, 9, 6 and divide it by 3 you got 8. Overall I do recommend Doom Eternal to people but I would say give it just a little while as I do know there's some DLC coming out that's supposed to bridge the gap between Doom Eternal and Doom 2016 so exactly, we know exactly how we got here. If you do pick it up early I would also recommend picking it up on Steam because the Bethesda launcher doesn't have any cloud saves, it doesn't have any achievements, it's absolutely hopeless and all of that so if you end up losing your saves like I did, congratulations you're doing your third playthrough. But yeah I really do hope you enjoyed the game and hope you enjoyed the review guys. So I'm just going to finish this off again just by saying that you don't need to like, you don't need to comment, you don't need to subscribe. As long as you enjoyed it we're perfectly happy there. If you did feel free to do all that but I'm not saying you have to. So anyway, yeah, it's in a bit sugar. So before we end this, I just want to give a huge shout out to Stubbs, the big bald man who just changed right there. He edited up this little section that you actually see behind me, uh, this whole cam section. The man's done that himself. So I'm going to go ahead, maybe subscribe to his YouTube, follow him on Twitch. Links are in the description. And credits.